On Tuesday, June 25th, 2019, at the new land in Taiwan, also known as Formosa, our beloved Supreme Master Ching Hai met with the former Vice President of Taiwan, Formosa, Her Excellency Liu Shudian, and guests. Her Excellency humbly presented Master with two books and a special tea from Yunnan, China. <laughs> A remarkable woman and influential orator, Her Excellency Liu is an advocate for democracy, women's rights, and peace. <laughs> National treasure. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Taiwan,国宝,国宝,国宝,国宝,国宝,国宝,国宝,国宝,国宝,国宝,国宝,国宝,国宝,国宝,国宝,国宝,国宝,国宝,国宝,国宝,国宝,国宝,国宝,国
，他们来，我们才能讲起去啊。嗯、我不能去敲门说：“哎，你知道我是谁吗？”<笑>出来听我讲话，<笑>也不能这样啊。哎，有机会的话，当然我会尽量。Our respectful appreciation, Your Excellency Du Shudian and guests, for your lovely presence at the dinner banquet with our beloved Master. Also, our immense gratitude to Supreme Master Ching Hai for her precious time and imparting wise words for us to learn from. May the heavens bestow on all ever more blessings and protect you always. For the full broadcast of this dinner meeting with Supreme Master Ching Hai, Her Excellency Du Shudian, and guests, please tune in to Words of Wisdom at a later date. On Sunday, June thirtieth, twenty nineteen, at the New Land in Taiwan, also known as Formosa, Supreme Master Ching Hai. Lovingly read from the book about the venerated Lord Mahavira and his ultimate devotion to spiritual practice. Continuing on from just after the gentle ascetic's renunciation, Master expounded on the part where a cowherd began physically abusing him while he was in deep meditation. After assuming Lord Mahavira tried to steal his oxen, without a second thought, he started hitting Mahavira with the rope he carried for tying the oxen. The hard sisal rope left large inflamed welts on Mahavira's naked body. Even this excruciating pain did not distract Mahavira from his meditation. See that? He just bore everything because he took a vow of equanimity and compassion. There are some more to come, huh? This is nothing yet. But even then, even the first trial, the second trial, the first trial, somebody took away his cloth, so he must be cold in the night, you know, or bearing the rain and the wind, whatever happened. And now it's the second time somebody beat him up for no reason like that, before even asking, before even thinking. And he bore it all with equanimity. I have told you before. I read the story that I don't know if anyone in the history of spiritual practice would、uh, endure so much and sacrifice so much like Lord Mahavira. What I mean is, any one, any normal one, a mortal one. Yeah, apart from the Buddhas and the saints, our radiant master then spoke of past benevolent saints and masters such as Lord Jesus Christ, the worshipped Shakyamuni Buddha, the venerated Milarepa, and other blessed ones who sacrificed and suffered so much to practice spiritually in our world for the sake of helping other beings. She also explained the reason for mentioning them to us. I read them for you. So that you can see some examples of、uh, past saints. At this time, he wasn't a saint yet. Yeah, maybe not yet, not complete yet. But he already practiced selflessness, sacrifice, and endurance. Understand?、Mm. So if we in this life we found life difficult or trying. Hardship, then we should remember all these stories, at least to comfort us that we are not、uh, in the dire situation, not as bad and so much pain and suffering like Lord Mahavira or like Shakyamuni Buddha, and like other saints and sages. That's some story I have read to you. This story alone will not bring you enlightenment or promise you any liberation, but as already enlightened practitioners like you are, it will serve as a reminder, okay, so that you more encouraged, more determined to go on your spiritual path unflinchingly. 
interwoven throughout the reading, Master imparted some important information for us and all of humanity, explaining why it is vital for her to continue her inner work through meditation retreats. You can see in our Supreme Master television, uh, animals, they're loving, so loving to, to animals and to, to other species of animals, not even their own species. Every time I see this on SMTV, I loved it so much and I wanted to go more on retreat to help them understand it motivated me more or the same as if I see suffering animals suffering animals they are helpless and they have been tortured killed maimed mistreated every day in our so-called civilization this is not civilization is barbarous, I'm thinking. I'm not even thinking. I know it is. How can we, strong, intelligent, powerful, be harassing or torturing or taking advantage of small, weak and helpless animals, even big ones like cows or something, they are very docile, you know, because they know, they practice endurance. They have more contact with heaven than many of the humans do. That's why they endure it. They could do something, but they chose not to. Most of the time they choose not to react or to revenge. But there is one... Uh, this is one of the instances that I remember in the circus somewhere, the mother elephant finally revenged and hurt many humans around just because they, I think they were harassing her baby, her little elephant to train, you know. They used very harsh and cruel ways to train and to break the elephant, to subdue the elephant into obedience, understand? Because they scare them so, and they break them down. Very cruel, very cruel practice. I saw that. It hurts and it bleeds, and they whip them or cut them, all kind of things. And I don't know if, if I'm living with humans or I'm living with beasts sometimes. Some people make me think that I'm not living with humans, that I'm not living on earth, that I'm living in hell somewhere. Because even in human's law, we only punish the bad ones, the criminals. The animals, they do nothing. They are no criminals. Why they have been subjected to such kind of, you know, was the nightmare, was an imagination kind of treatment. And it's still going on nowadays on our so-called civilized planet. If I don't think about that, then I still can live. If I keep thinking about that, I just don't want to stay here anymore. I don't know if humans, some humans or many humans are really worthy of any mercy or redemption. If I think about that, pardon my anger. I'm doing a lot more retreat nowadays, whenever I can, okay? Be it three days, two days, one week, five days, one month, whatever I can, okay? So if you don't see me sometimes, uh, please don't try to pull me out by praying this and that and understand? Just let me do my job also, okay? My job is not only to teach you or entertain you, but my job is inside for other beings, okay? Not just this planet, other planets as well. You help me by meditating and wishing me success in my inner journey. And that's the best you can do. Most precious Master, our earnest and forever gratitude for your patience, fortitude and ingenuity in finding different ways to teach us and guide us back home. May your meditation retreats be uninterrupted and serene and may your benevolent mission come to pass very soon in all God's love. 
For the full broadcast of this lecture by Supreme Master Ching Hai, please tune in to Between Master and Disciples at a later date.